Hi everyone, my name is Amr Matwedli. I graduated from the University of Michigan in 2013 and I studied history and Middle East studies and uh, dabbled in pre-med for a while, uh, <laughs> which I think everyone does at Michigan. <laughs> um, and I ended up, I did a Fulbright ETA, English Teaching Assistantship, to Turkey. Um, and uh, for, I mean, for several reasons, um, I studied Turkish at U of M for two years. Um, I also studied Turkish uh, diaspora in the Netherlands, and that's sort of what initially got me interested in the country. Um, and I really wanted to get experience teaching and teaching as well. Um, so my interests lie specifically with uh, immigrant communities um, and sort of how immigrant communities deal with education and education inequality. Um, and so Turkey was a really fascinating place to be, I, also just given the, the influx of Syrian refugees. Um, and so specifically along the south and southeast uh, region of Turkey, a, a lot of us who were in, in those areas had Syrian students uh, or interacted with sort of Syrian refugees on a day-to-day -day basis, which was just uh, a really eye-opening experience. But I, uh, so I was based in Antalya, which is southern Turkey, um, and it was about five hours to southwest or west Turkey along um, the Aegean. Um, and then, so I was in Antalya, which is a really interesting place, given the fact that it's one of the biggest immigrant hubs, sort of internally. So we have a lot of, uh, there were a lot of people from southeast Turkey, um, such as Diyarbakir, where there's a, uh, the big Kurdish capital, uh, a lot of people from Gaziantep, from Mersin, Tarsus, Adana, um, Antakya, and Hatay. They would a lot of them would come to Antalya for work. So it was a, it was definitely sort of the melting pot of Turkey uh, to be there. And obviously Istanbul and Ankara uh, are you know in a different league, but compared to the you know if you're not in a mega city, then Antalya was a really interesting place to be. Um, and I, I wanted to start first talking about my experience in the classroom uh, with, the, with the Fulbrighters who are with me um, and then go through some of my experiences uh, in Turkey just traveling across the country. And so first, so these were the other Fulbrighters with me uh, in Antalya and um, we were wearing our, our favorite uh, there's a, a dish in Antalya called piaz, which is uh, a white bean dish with tahini, and mm -hmm. uh, it's sort of the city staple. And there's this one restaurant called Shishi Ramazan where we would always go, <laughs> and uh, they eventually gave us sweaters. <laughs> so we we took Christmas photos in the sweater. Uh, we thought you know red was the, r the right color to do Christmas in. So uh, there were five of us in Antalya, which is pretty. It was pretty strange. Uh, usually there are only one or two Fulbrighters in a city, uh, but our university had a few openings and they really wanted as many English, native English speakers as possible. So there were five of us. Uh, and it was great having that network there. So we had familiar faces and I would see them every day at work. And we made a point, you know, once a week or twice a week to check in and, and hang out with each other after work to make sure everyone was doing okay and, and see if anyone needed help. Um, you know, navigating the city or, or if they needed help in the classroom or, or whatnot. Uh, and here's a picture with some of, some of my, so this is Theodora, who's sitting next to me. Um, and so with some of Theodora's students on the last day of classes in Antalya, as you can see, the sun was really bright. Uh, in June, it kind of shot up to 95 degrees. And when we got there in September, it was 100 something degrees. So uh, we were you know, sort of s greeted and, and pushed out with, with intense heat. And the months in between was uh, very windy and very rainy. Uh, but it was nice to get a break from snow for once. Um, you know, I got plenty of that at Michigan. And these, so this was um, one, I think one of the greatest things about the ETA was the sense of community that you were kind of automatically brought into just by being in a classroom and being with colleagues and, and students. Um, and that ultimately, ultimately was one of the reasons why I decided not to uh, apply for a research grant. I, I really wanted to be uh, outside of Istanbul. Uh, I had been there before and I, I'm pretty familiar with the city and I wanted to be in 
uh, a different part of the country and really interacting daily with um, with students. And so that's, you know, my students were very uh, hospitable and two of them invited myself and Aubrey, the other, one of the other ETAs, um, for dinner and we'd, we'd go have chai and uh, it was a really great way for, for them to become comfortable speaking English and giving us a chance to practice Turkish and um, kind of developing those relationships outside the classroom, which I think is one of the, one of the reasons that Fulbright um, you know, markets itself and really is uh, a cultural exchange. Um, and you know, my students also, they would come to the airport and they would come to Istanbul if they knew we were going to be in Istanbul for a weekend. Uh, so here is me and one of the other Fulbrighters, Lauren, um, and it was our last day in Turkey and two of our students came and spent the day with us and uh, another one of my students actually came to the airport with me and insisted on sitting with me until I actually left to the gate to leave. Uh, and, I was trying to explain to him, he can't come with me into the gate, but uh, so they were they were very sweet and they they greeted us and showered us with love and it was definitely something that we tried to tried to return. Um, here's another picture of my class um, and it was on our last day. We I took them to a cafe on campus um, and so it was interesting because my students uh, were medical students and I we were the the Ontario Fulbrighters were the only ones who were actually teaching full English classes. Normally, you're you're just a speaking teacher, uh, but we were responsible for everything from planning the lessons, uh, grading the exams, uh, teaching uh, grammar, reading, writing, listening, speaking. Um, so it was definitely a challenge, and it was something that we were you know we we kind of just jumped into as soon as we got to Turkey. But um, students were definitely patient with with us as we as we got our our sea legs. Um, and so this is one of my classes. I had two classes, about 50 students uh, total, and I taught for about 22 hours a week. Um, and the second semester was a, a little less, but um, the students were great, and this was actually on my birthday. Uh, they surprised me with a cake. Um, and this is, I just wanted to give a quick picture of of Antalya. So it's right on the Mediterranean in southern Turkey and it's just completely surrounded by mountains. You can see some of the Taurus mountains in the back. Um, and this is actually in downtown Antalya and there's a big park that just hugs a cliff and then down below you can see is the water. Um, so it was, def it was really beautiful and I think uh, a lot of the Fulbrighters from California, for example, were used to seeing this on a daily basis in California. And then I came and I was just blown away and I'm, I'm used to the, the expansive greatness of the Midwest and to kind of have this was a very different world. Um, but it was just a, a kind of a, a quick picture of Antalya. Um, here's another picture. and. And you can see, I mean, year-round, this was taken during the winter. Year-round, people would still go by the water. Uh, it was too cold to swim, but it was nice to know that it was a 10-minute bus ride away. Um, and one of the things about life in Turkey that I found very interesting was the uh, adoration of Ataturk, the founder of the modern Turkish Republic. And every university has a statue of him uh, on their grounds, and every classroom has a picture of him. And Every government building has a picture of him. And so this was the Octanese University statue of Ataturk. Uh, I'd walk by every day. Um, finally, I just had to go take a picture. <laughs> and um, so now I wanted to talk a little bit about the, the trips that I was able to take on some of the weekends and breaks um, outside of Antalya. And this was actually during the Istanbul Tenke, um, which started in Asia and went across the Bosphorus Bridge into Europe. So this was taken on the bridge um, on my way into the European side. And um, one of the, I think that was one of the things that was really important about the year, um, was not only getting a chance to explore the country, but uh, getting really an intimate understanding of every corner of Turkey and, and what each region provides and, and sort of the conversations and identities and attitudes that um, southwest Turkey has versus southern Turkey has versus the southeast, the east, and so on. Um, and here's another picture of Istanbul on the waterfront. Uh, that's the, the famous Galata Tower in the back. And 
this was taken also during the the race uh, one of the greatest things is the food in Turkey and uh, those are simits which is so the best way to describe it they're sort of like it's sesame bread um, and it looks like a donut but a, a big donut uh, and this was it was just funny because this was taken during the 10k so you know instead of in the states if you ran a race they'd give you Gatorade or they'd give you a banana or something in Turkey they just throw sea meat everywhere and uh, you just take one and keep running uh, um, so you know just the the Turkish flair to to the everyday life um, and they, they kept up with everyone the entire race so I was impressed um, and this is, this is the background of, uh, this is the fortress, the big fortress in Istanbul, which is actually used to um, conquer the city uh, for the Ottomans. So before it was mm -hmm. under the Byzantine rule, and then the Ottomans took Istanbul over and made it into a Muslim city. Um, so it's a boat ride, and, and here's the fortress, the Rumeli fortress behind me. Um, this is inside the Hagia Sophia, or the Hagia Sophia Mosque, in the old town of Istanbul. It used to be a church, a Byzantine church, and then the Ottomans, uh, when they took over the city, converted it into um, uh, a mosque. And so this is, it's not in use, it's just a museum now, but uh, a lot of the intricate calligraphy and artwork and, and, uh, uh, is still there. And actually, if you look closely, you'll see some of the um, Christian iconography is still there as well. And that was sort of an interesting uh, testament to Istanbul's long history of cosmopolitanism and sort of being able to combine different religions and, and ideas together into this coexisting model. Um, and this is, uh, this is a picture of one of my Turkish friends and my friend Aubrey, one of the ETAs, trying uh, midye, which is a stuffed mussel. Uh, and normally I'd always been really afraid to try them. Uh, then finally my friend Mujo just insisted and said, no, you're going to take, you're gonna try it. And this is actually in Adana um, in uh, about 10 hours east of Antalya. So we, we came and visited them and, and he showed us around. How was it? It was great, Adana? Yeah. No, 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 the muscles. Oh, the muscles. Oh, Adana was great. The <laughs> muscles were I, unbelievable. I think oh, that, okay. that was the big regret that I had that I did not try it earlier <laughs> in the year. <laughs> Um, this is actually another picture in Istanbul of the Blue Mosque, um, and I don't have a picture of the inside, unfortunately, but anyone should Google it if they're interested. It's, it's just remarkable. Um, this was, so I mentioned kind of briefly the community that the ETA program also provided. So these aren't all of the ETAs, and there are uh, some Turkish friends and colleagues, but actually the Fulbrighters in Afyon invited everyone in central Turkey over for Thanksgiving. Uh, and everyone kind of tried to make a point of any big holiday. So uh, we, there was a Halloween party, a Thanksgiving, a Christmas. Um, uh, I think someone did an Easter party. Uh, but I mean, it was, it was just nice having, uh, not only in your own city, but across the country, a network of, of people who were sort of going through the same ups and downs as you. Um, and just knowing you had a place to stay if, uh, if you happen to go to one of these cities. And so this is a group of us in Afyon for Thanksgiving. Uh, and then this is Cappadocia, the, the famous fairy chimney land in Turkey, um, and the, the hot air balloons. I did not go, it's too expensive. Uh, you're, you're able to live fine at, with the Fulbright grant, but not enough to take a hot air balloon ride in <laughs> Cappadocia, but hope to go back and, and experience that one day. And this is actually, I wanted to include this picture. So I, obviously I don't have time to include pictures from every city that I went to, but uh, this one's pretty remarkable because it's in the Southeast uh, and it's called Hassan Kaif. Uh, and actually because of the massive uh, dam that's being built in Turkey, this is actually going to disappear in a year. It's gonna be completely submerged and the city's been around for a few thousand years, I'm uh, pretty sure. Um, so I have a picture of the minaret you see in the background. So up to the minaret will be completely submerged in water, and they're actually building Yeni Hasan Kaif, or New Hasan Kaif, on the cliff behind the city. So it was eerie to go and see the city, uh, and then look and see the beginnings of the new city. Uh, and um, I, I mean, everyone was just very heartbroken about the the, the fact that this history is going to be erased in Turkey. Um, mm -hmm. But it, it, it was 
I think one of the experiences that uh, I'll take with me and I wanted to share with all of you, uh, and it would not have been possible if I didn't have a chance to go to Turkey and um, have the time to actually live in the country and, and, and talk to people and, and have the language skills to do so. Um, this is from on top of Vaughn, uh, Vaughn Castle. Uh, so it's on this big jagged cliff. Uh, and you'll see Lake Vaughn in the background um, and the city is behind us and to the right. Uh, and the castle is behind us as well. I didn't have a, a good picture of the castle. Unfortunately, I was just caught up with the view. Um, but this is in Vaughn, also in Eastern Turkey. Uh, and then this is in Mardin. Uh, it's actually in Southeast Turkey. Uh, up in the background, it's actually the border um, mm -hmm. with Syria and Iraq. Uh, and so it's an interesting town. Um, Mardin, Gaziantep, and Antakya had very large um, Arabic-speaking Turkish populations. So it's a very, I think, once again, a regional flair to Turkey that you normally don't get if you're just in Istanbul or Ankara. Um, and the fact that there is a large swath of the country that speaks Arabic and Kurdish and, and Turkish um, it kind of just blew my mind. And uh, it was great because I was able to, to get around speaking Arabic with, with a lot of the people in Mardin. And uh, those are just the, the Mesopotamian plains in the background. Um, and then kind of behind that uh, is Iraq and, and, and Syria. Iraq, not quite there, but along the border. Uh, here's just another picture of the, the plains uh, in Mardin, and it's actually on a cliff as well. So it's uh, just everything has this view in the back. Uh, it's very, very beautiful. And here's one of the Fulbrighters. Um, we all had a, a, a long weekend break for one of the national holidays, so we kind of did a big sweep of the southeast and east. Um, and I think if, yeah, so this was, I wanted to end with this. Um, and this is actually an abandoned Armenian kingdom in Turkey um, that is not sort of publicized on government um, government tourist brochures, um, but it's there and people still take you there. And uh, it's actually right on the Armenian border. Uh, this kingdom was called Ani, and uh, it's just completely, it's just empty. And so you can see some remnants of old buildings in, in the background of the photo, uh, but you just go in and, and walk around um, if you look through the window in the back, that's actually Armenia. So um, in another photo I'll show next, it's just a river. And then that river is the boundary between Turkey and Armenia, uh, which is right here. And so the bottom, in the bottom of the photo, that river is the border of Armenia. And then um, Armenia is right there. Uh, so I think that's, I wanted to end with that photo because uh, I think that one of the biggest takeaways that I had from Turkey was even though I, I studied Turkish and studied the Middle East and studied Turkey here at Michigan, I don't think it, it wasn't until I got to the country and started to live there and move around, um, whether it was in my city or across the country, where I really understood um, how sort of how different Turkey is. Uh, depending on where you are and also the role that Turkey's playing in the world today, which is definitely getting a lot of attention in the news. Um, and it was just a privilege to be able to get a glimpse of that during my year abroad. And so thank you so much for hearing me out, and I hope you enjoyed this brief recap of my year. <laughs> thank you. I mean, you're thinking of applying to the Armenian Yeah. Sorry. Wherefore? Um, I applied a couple of years ago for Romania. Romania? Yeah. Um, okay. I'm from there originally. Hmm. Um, so, well, so I'm aware of their skills. Um, okay. Uh, um, research grant? That was a research grant, yeah. Okay. Um, and that one was um, uh, in collaboration with the university near, near the, um, the artist's that I wanted to do the research on. Sure. Yeah. OK. Um, but um, with the ETA, you also mentioned that you have some, you know, some other research interests. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. A yeah. lot of research interests have stemmed from that. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, so it's not, is it still recording? Or is this just for you now? I think it is. It's still recording. Okay. Oh, uh, I was gonna say. I wonder how. Um, we can. We're gonna. Yeah. yeah. So the the re So you are expected when you apply. You're expected to have a, a secondary project. Um, 
to be honest, at least with Turkey, and I, I've heard from other countries, they don't necessarily, they don't really care whether you do one or not. Um, at least in Turkey, they, they kind of just made it clear that like, your priorities to teach. <laughs> um, but I think everyone found interesting ways to do things on the side. So one, um, one Fulbrighter did uh, volunteered at a refugee camp outside of Ankara and worked with uh, Iraqi and Syrian refugees there. Um, another one did um, worked with a beekeeper, a, a former Fulbrighter years ago, who lives now lives in eastern Turkey and does um, women's entrepreneurship through like honey. And she apparently eastern Turkey is known around the world for its honey, and so she works with women. Uh, in villages across the east to, to produce honey and, and try to get them into the global market. Yeah. Um, and so one, I think a couple of people went and, and helped her out for a while. Um, my research, uh, I wanted to look at, um, so I mentioned I, I study migration and that's sort of what I'm interested in. And for me, I, I proposed, when I applied, I said I wanted to look at uh, border regions in Turkey. Uh, but then I got there and I remember the first day of, of class, I told them that I am a Muslim American and they were truly shocked that there were Muslims living in the United States. Mm -hmm. So I sort of made that my research project and I wanted to do an exploration on um, Muslim, sort of Muslim attitudes in Turkey versus the United States and the idea of um, Americans in Turkey mm -hmm. um, and it was it was pretty informal but I still was able to do some interviews with my students um, and and get them to think critically and, and creatively into uh, through not so much writing their English uh, was not good enough for writing but um, sort of writing at that level but uh, photography and um, some radio short radio clips on what they thought migration meant and what it, what did it look like for them. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, you're, I mean, you definitely have time to do a project, uh, but it's, you're, you know, your focus while you're there is to teach, um, but, you, I mean, if, if you're thinking about an ETA, it does, it definitely gives you the time uh, to carry out a second project. Mm -hmm. What would you say is maybe a departure from what was in the brochure and what the reality was in there? Yeah. Um, I would say the, the biggest the biggest departure for me was uh, I came to Turkey thinking that I was going to be a speaking assistant and I got yeah. to the university and they said these are your classes here are your exam dates and I said okay well you know where's the and they said here's your co-teacher and I was like oh you know so I told the co-teacher I'm really excited to, to work with you in class and she was kind of confused and, and she said what do you mean and I was like well I'm, I'm your speaking teacher she said no 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 you're a teacher and so I went to the department head and we were all kind of confused and we found out that we were not teaching assistants but <laughs> teachers. Um, so that was for me the biggest departure. Um, that's it's kind of curious because it's certainly portrayed right, right, right. as you're an assistant, you are not the main teacher. Right, right, right. This is the but, but I know across the, I mean, I think at every other Fulbrighter in Turkey, they, they were speaking assistants. So they had, um, oh, okay. they, they sort of, yeah, so in Turkey, it's called hazırlık, which is preparatory, and so you're, everyone, you, you teach at the university level, and you have to teach a year of intensive English before they're ready to move on for their degree program. Um, and so some of the Fulbrighters had, they saw every section of the hazırlık students, but they just saw them for an hour or two a week and just mm -hmm. did speaking for two hours with each class. Uh, and that, that was the norm. Um, what we went through was definitely I would say the biggest departure, um, but I think it's. I think that's why it's. I think one of the biggest pieces of advice I would give is, don't be afraid to get in touch beforehand or even while you're waiting on a response um, to try to get more information, uh, or even use the resources that Michigan has provided to get in touch with a former former Fulbrighter, uh, because I think at the end of the day, the commission. Um, in each country wants to put forth a certain vid vision, but they also know that each situations on the ground don't necessarily always go according to plan. Mm -hmm. So I think getting the, that on the ground experience from one of the Fulbrighters is really, um, really invaluable. Um, and uh, it was also just great because there were three 
two other Michigan kids with me in Fulbright that year, um, Emily and Kevin. So it was really great having them there um, and uh, ended up seeing them quite a bit uh, throughout the year. So it was great. It was really great to have uh, a Wolverine community in Turkey <laughs> of all places. Did you take any pictures with the black M? <laughs> you know, I we didn't. We didn't. Emily had a Michigan sweater that she pretty much took everywhere with her. I mean, I think I'd say half half of her photos in Turkey had her with the Michigan sweater. Oh, that's um, great. <laughs> I, I brought my Michigan history shirt, uh, but I uh, don't have any pictures of that. I'm trying to think. I don't have any pictures of that. I know of that they had a thing where they were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take, to take the picture. Yeah, no, for whatever, sure, yeah. for sure. <laughs> um, but I, I think, um, yeah, I mean, I think the, the ETA program, uh, I think a lot of the people who do a research grant want to go get a PhD, I, at least with the, the Turkish researchers. Mm -hmm. I think most, if not all, have like a PhD in mind. Um, whereas the ETAs is sort of across the board. Some wanted to go into international affairs, some wanted to go into business, some wanted to go into uh, teaching, uh, some wanted to do you know, none of the above. I see some wanted to become professors. So you just got, I think, a much more diverse um, group of, of, of people in the ETA program. Um, but I, I will say, at least with Turkey, uh, the, if, you're, if you're looking for language or like to be immersed in the language, uh, the research grant is uh, a huge plus because you have to, I think with every country, you have, I mean, you have to be good enough to be able to do interviews and to, to research and, and whatnot. And, um, the, yeah, the, the researchers in Turkey, their, their Turkish was just phenomenal. <laughs> it, was just, <laughs> it was just crazy. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I mentioned, so I was going to do a research grant and mm -hmm. then I decided not to at the last minute and I kind of just had to like scramble to get everything in before the, the Michigan deadline. Um, <laughs> but I mentioned, yeah, for me it was, I, I wanted to be in a community and I wanted to be in a city that wasn't Istanbul because yes it is it is very much a Turkish city but it's also not at the same time so I wanted something that was mm -hmm. um, you know not necessarily portrayed on on TV or, or not. also I had, I had been to Istanbul so um, I wanted to try something different so I wanted you to dig a little deeper and get yeah, a broader exactly, yeah exactly 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 um, I'm trying to think no, did you have anything that occurred to you? No, I just put it off, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you should go. I highly recommend it. I, I have been wanting to get to Turkey for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I probably would limit myself to Istanbul just because I, you know, have not ever traveled. I mean, I would like to go further, but I need to, I need to get my traveling chops up. I think, yeah, yeah, I yeah, went yeah. Too far. <laughs> so, some of the, I mean, so like Cappadocia is easy. There's, because there's, uh, there are flights all the time between Istanbul and um, the city near Cappadocia. Okay. So it's, there's, I know a lot of people who have gone to Turkey and then spent some time in Istanbul, then just flew straight to Cappadocia, mm -hmm. then flew back to Istanbul and then, and then left. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's just, I mean, just looking from the oh, landscape, yeah. everything's mountainous. It, it looks like Lord of the Rings could have been shot <laughs> there. I mean, it was just, especially Eastern Turkey. I, I took a night bus and it was, like a 20 hour bus ride. And I remember at one point I woke up and it was just completely groggy and I look out the window and there's just these rolling hills and these lakes and I, I, I look <laughs> and I, was, I just think, like, where are we? And I go back to bed and then I look again and it's just more. I thought like we stopped for a while. And then, and then I look and I turn to the person next to me and I ask him, you know, are, like, where are we? And he looked at me like, uh, we're in Turkey. Like, what do you mean? <laughs> um, so it, it was just it's just a beautiful beautiful country mm -hmm. and um, actually really easy to get around um, they the flights were an issue uh, they were, I don't think I ever was on a flight that took off on time but the buses <laughs> ran like clockwork if really? they're leaving at 11 they're leaving at 11 if it's if they told you it's gonna take 11 hours it's gonna take 11 hours oh, nice. um, that's good to know yeah yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah exactly it's yeah. the opposite of, of how, you know how I think it would works at other parts of the world yeah. um, but it was great, and it was uh, uh, the grant was more than enough to cover expenses and and, and um, how did they do it? How did they do the payments for like your stipend? That's yeah, um, we were paid. So we were paid through the university. Um, oh. I know. I think at, at other ETAs and other countries were paid directly by the commission. Mm -hmm. They were just given the check every month, or the money was deposited. Did they give you money like upfront, so like when you arrived, you had a padding, or did you? Have to uh, they gave us. 
200 lira, but okay. it's not enough. Not um, they definitely told us to bring some money with you to carry you through the first month or so. Okay. Um, so, but you were, the universities pay you, and one of the first things they did when, once you got to the university was um, take you, well, first get your permit, residency permit, mm -hmm. and then take you to the bank, the bank. and right. then get the account set up, Very and then, standard. yeah, okay. yeah. And then we knew 15th of every month we'd get okay. the money. Nice. So, so it sounds like it was pretty reliable. Yeah, well, like, well, so once you once the legwork was done, then yeah, it was then then, then, it, was then it fell into place. But <laughs> up until then, it was like. Uh, you know. I know some places that get there and they just get like a check or not check, but like a, a payment, and then that was like when for the year. Was, it was like half. Like are you half serious? Of the time. Yeah, I'm trying to remember oh, wow. what country was it, and I just my jaw dropped. I was like, are you serious? I know, I know yeah. the Armenian ETAs. Because uh, <laughs> I met some of the Armenian ETAs. Uh, in Istanbul, and they told me that they were paid, they were given a departure allowance. Okay. Um, so they were given, I think, like three thousand dollars to okay. buy their plane ticket and then also carry them through the first month or two, okay. um, which was that great. Sounds, <laughs> it sounds yeah. great. So, yeah. Well, and apparently, I've talked with the Armenia ETAs, and apparently, it's you know, the stipend is actually is rather luxurious for I've Armenia. heard yeah I've yeah. heard I've heard they were they were living comfortably for the yes. year <laughs> maybe comfortably money wise but the winter was pretty vicious yeah <laughs> yeah 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 exactly uh, oh good All right, well thanks thank you so yeah, much yeah no 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 no, no problem for coming in and no problem.